Hey, what's this? Why, yes, it is Linux running on my new Snapdragon X Elite powered laptop called the Asus VivoBook. And yes, it's Arch, by the way. So is this real? Why, yes, it is. I can log in as root and there I am. Now notice I'm using this old keyboard that's plugged in through USB and you might be wondering why. I'll get to that in a moment. But yeah, I'm on a Linux shell. You might also notice that this is not the GUI interface. You might notice a lot of things like that when bringing up a Linux machine for a brand new system like this is. See, the Snapdragon X Elite series of machines are pretty new and I recently got to find out what it takes to put Linux on these things. Don't worry, it's easy to install. Okay. Okay, that was, that was a complete lie, and I admit to it, I did try a few things. I tried the most popular distro out there, probably, Ubuntu, the ARM version of that, the server ARM version of that, and nothing worked. And I tried it on this Asus VivoBook with the x -Elite, along with a bunch of other x -Elite machines. None of them would boot Ubuntu. So how did I get Arch Linux installed on this machine? Well, from a technical standpoint, anything is possible, right? It just requires time and effort. And I put in almost four hours of my time punching in commands that somebody else was telling me to punch in. Yes, I admit to it, I am a Linux noob. I'm a user, I'm a casual user of Ubuntu. I've been a Windows user for 30 years and a Mac user for the last 12 or so. And Arch Linux, while it gives you a lot of control, that's why people use it and like it, you also need to have a lot of knowledge, a lot of background knowledge to be able to install it. And that's why people that are more technical in the Linux world prefer Arch Linux, but it's also a lot more difficult to install, as I found out. So there's absolutely no way in hell that I could have installed this on this machine myself. I reached out to a Linux kernel engineer and my measly for almost four hours that I spent on it is nothing compared to the time that these folks have put in getting Linux up and running in general and also on specific machines. As I found out, that's what needs to happen here as well. And that leads me to the reason why I'm using a keyboard like this, why I don't have a fancy desktop just yet, why Linux is only running on the Asus VivoBook and not the Samsung Galaxy or the Surface machines or the Dell machines. It was a really eye-opening experience getting to play around with the bits and pieces to try and get this running. And the way Linux goes out to people, the way you get it eventually on a little stick like this, and you can just stick it in and boom, 10 minutes later you have Linux running on your machine, is a, a complicated long process. There's the kernel of the Linux system, and that's just what it sounds like. And a kernel engineer works on the core of the Linux system. Kernel is responsible for managing system resources and the interaction between low-level hardware and software and the operating system. Now, along with the kernel, there's also a device tree. This is something that's going to be specific to each of these machines because each machine is going to have different components on it, different ports, different keyboards, different screens, touchpads, and so on. And a device tree describes the hardware that's attached to each individual machine to the operating system. And a device tree is gonna be different for each machine. It has to be manually programmed for each machine. And once a device tree is described, it can be upstream merged into the kernel. Upstreaming is the process of submitting these changes to the kernel, to the official kernel, so that the changes become part of the official code base. Now, as far as the Snapdragon X Elite machines, they've already had Linux working on it for a while. But if you remember, you might have seen some materials uh, online, some videos from Qualcomm with these red laptops. They're the ones that they are dog fooding and using themselves and developing on and testing on. Well, those have Linux working on it. There's a company called Linaro, Lin for Linux, RO for ARM, O is for, I, I don't know, it just sounds cool maybe. So they've been developing Linux and integrating it on ARM. That's their whole purpose. And they've been working with Qualcomm to get Linux on these new machines with the Snapdragon and X elites. They've already done most of what needs to be done on those red machines. The device tree is done on that, but the red machines are not your Samsungs. They're not your Asus, Dell, or Microsoft machines, or HPs, or Lenovo's. They're just the nondescript things that have their own device tree. So just because it's working on that does not mean it's gonna be working on all the other ones. All the other ones have to be built separately. Targeting Linux on some specific machines might be further along than some other machines. For example, there's a GitHub repo, Arch64 laptop, Tops, this will lead you to some repositories with instructions on how you can get Linux working on some machines. Now, this website right here that they're hosting on GitHub has linked machines like this ThinkPad X13S and 
the distros that are available to get things going right now. You take a look at Arch Linux ARM, this specific machine, you have information that people have kept track of this. ACPI dump from Windows, basically this is the dump that people need to start with to get information for certain systems so they can build a device tree based on that. This is for this specific machine. And then you have the breakdown of each little piece like audio, power, Bluetooth, touchscreen, GPU, and so on. Under Ubuntu, it actually gives you instructions on how you can get this set up. And they even give you a download image. But this would be kind of useless for me to try on my machines because I don't have the Lenovo one yet. And since Asus shipped their machines much sooner to everybody, you're seeing a lot more progress done on that one for Linux. Here's a Pharonix article that just came out. It looks like Asus VivoBook S15 could be one of the first devices with decent Linux support. Their patches undergoing review for upstreaming. I already explained what that all that is. The Asus VivoBook S15 device tree support so that much of the basic functionality is working under Linux, but various features are known to be broken. Not necessarily broken, they're just not built yet. Linux kernel developer Shilling Wu has been working through the device tree support for this Snapdragon X laptop, namely the Asus VivoBook. Currently, the laptop battery monitoring is not working, display orientation, USB type A ports are not working. That's why I'm running this to a dock to USB-C and obviously the keyboard is not working. That's why I'm running it externally. There is a mailing list with updates on what's happening on these machines if you care to follow this closely. And this has some relevant links to pull requests from people that are currently very close to this and working on this themselves. And we're not talking about a Microsoft here that has a dedicated team that they pay and they funded to have Windows for ARM working on these machines. No. It's not like that. That's why we're seeing such slow progress. But this progress can be improved, in my opinion, from what I've seen. I'm going to venture just a guess here that Microsoft's Windows was the first priority to get working on these. And Linux is a priority, but it's like down here somewhere on the list. And that's why I don't think that they're being funded enough. But I also don't think it'll be an insurmountable task to fund these developers that are super passionate about this stuff. The problem that I've seen is that these developers that are currently working on implementing this that need to test on physical machines don't have these machines. That's why Shilin Wu was able to get this far with the Asus Vivo book because this person has one of these. There are more computer models and different device trees to dissect and there are people working on this. So time is another factor, yes. But also having these in those people's hands is important. That also explains why Linux works well on the red laptops, but none of us can buy those. So my plea is with Qualcomm. Please Qualcomm, if you're serious about Linux, send these engineers some of these machines so they can get their hands on it and iterate faster on getting Linux out there. I understand that Microsoft might not like this. That's maybe what's holding you back, but it's time to show people that you're serious about Linux and the developer community. Now, if you're interested in setting up a Windows development environment that includes Linux running in Windows under WSL, watch this video next. I did a whole tutorial. It's a bit on the long side, so be prepared for that. Get a coffee and I will see you in the next video.